Hello, I'm Andrew Keane from Edison Group. It's a pleasure today for me to welcome Jazz Singh, founder and CEO of Innovation Agritech Group, or IAG, an innovator in the aeroponic vertical growing space. Jazz, welcome. Thank you, Andrew, for having me. Jazz, let's start with uh, an introduction to IAG for people who are unfamiliar with the group. Yeah, so Innovation Agritech Group, known as IAG, we specialize in building sustainable aeroponic vertical farming solutions in a controlled environment. So what are the benefits of growing vertically versus traditional farming? Traditional farming at the moment cannot keep up with the amount of uh, growing population that we have right now. So we have to innovate. We have to change the way that we're growing certain crops. Um, Now, vertical farming cannot grow all crops at the moment. It's still a relatively very new industry. And um, but we are exploring which crops work relatively well. And those sort of are sort of leafy greens and herbs. But the real, uh, the real focus point for us is how can we grow in these crops and grow them in a controlled environment on time and not have seasonality dependency. So unlike traditional farming, um, we only get so many seasons of the years that we can grow. And in a, in a controlled environment in vertical farming, it's having the perfect day, 365 days of the year. So you've mentioned vertical farming in a controlled environment. Can, can you expand on what that means? Yeah, so uh, we control environment um, agriculture, which we say short for CEA. And CEA is really about controlling all elements that what a plant needs to grow um, at, to grow successfully and to have a perfect yield. Um, imagine it like a perfect summer's day. So what we do within a controlled CEA environment is that we control the temperature, the humidity. We, con- we change the spectrum of light. Some crops will, not, will need more far red or far blue. So you give the plant exactly what it needs, when it needs. And therefore, you're able to shorten the growing cycle of certain plants and, build, and, and grow a perfect crop, which a supermarket will say is a, it's an A crop, A star crop. So there's a there's a distinct pickup in productivity then you know so you look you're less dependent on weather patterns and 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 other factors as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then it also comes down to consistency of the actual crop. So with certain supermarkets and retailers, they have a certain specification that they have to buy in at. And with changes of weather and global warming, um, a lot, where we can grow in a controlled environment, we can actually have really consistent by actually keeping the temperature consistent, keeping our lighting spectrums consistent the temperature and humidity and all the areas that the plants actually need, which pretty much gives us consistency in the product. So when we go to the supermarket, we're actually seeing exactly what the consumer wants to buy. And what about the carbon footprint? Um, how is how that impacted by the technology? It's really about carbon emissions. So if we're able to bring build our facilities closer to the consumers, it allows food to be uh, food miles to be reduced, um, which allows you know our farm to fork miles being reduced directly to the consumer. So building our facilities with our operating partners as close to the distribution and warehouse centers as possible, so they're not traveling as far, which ultimately reduces carbon emissions. So IAG is going down the model of being a technology provider rather than an actual producer of fruit. Is that the right understanding? Yes, that's absolutely. Now, vertical farming is a relatively fairly new industry, um, and there is a lot of research and development that goes into actually growing these crops. So we have a 10,000 square foot facility based in Bracknell, and that whole facility is purely for uh, research and development and how we can grow crops efficiently. That way, when our operators uh, use our technology, we've done all the work behind it where they just have to press a button on the screen and says, grow lettuce. Um, and it will change the temperature, the lighting spectrums, the wind, the humidity around it, and the amount of CO2 that's needed. And it takes the guesswork out. And the technology itself, is it, does it apply just to food or, or are there any other methods of, or products that you can grow with this? Our focus over the last few years has always been in sort of leafy greens and herbs. But however, recently with our collaborative university and academic research partners that we've been working with, they have introduced other pharmaceutical crops that we have been trialing and testing alongside them to seeing which crops relatively work quite well. And actually, it's quite an interesting research and development space that we've started to explore as of this year. And we feel that there will be some real commercial opportunities that will be up and coming due to some of those collaborations. And how does your how does your technology differ to others in the space? So Innovation Agritech Group, we really build modular and scalable units, which allows uh, which allows our users to come in at a relatively lower capex cost compared to traditional sort of 
vertical farms that you might read about of purchasing 50 to 100 million pound mega facilities. And what we're doing is that we're bringing smaller modular and scalable designs within vertical farming, allowing more sort of medium term growers to access their technology. Um, and that's, our, that's one of our key competitive advantages. We also do a lot of work within the research and academic space, um, allowing sort of universities and academics to really trial novel crops so we can actually build more sort of research developed control labs using vertical growing um, and that allows us to give us that competitive edge and some of the additional competitive advantages are is that we um, we use aeroponic opposed to hydroponic and aeroponics is misting the roots r relatively quite finely um, and where and it uses up to 70 percent less water than hydroponics so some of our target markets um, are really around the middle east um, where water scarcity is, is pretty high at the moment so your technology has a specific advantage with uh, conserving water? Yeah, so uh, we, we've developed what we call a closed loop system uh, with water. And what that does is that we, um, in the water gets misted onto our plant roots. Anything that's left over goes through an RO and a UV filter, and then it gets recirculated again. And the key is, is to keep that same water uh, um, being used in the root. So the roots will just take exactly what they need and get back. And especially where water scarcity is an issue, um, especially in the Middle East where our target market is, it allows us to um, really focus on those key elements. So, so given that, how, how, does, how does that unique approach fit into your target markets? So when we assess our target markets, it's really looking at about two pillars of uh, where vertical farming works. And those two pillars that we normally identify is where is food scarcity, um, which normally drives food um, at a more of an increased price. And where is electricity, where can it be sourced from either renewable energy or a cost effective solution? And some of the key markets that we've identified is really the Middle East. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a growing population at the moment. Food security is part of their government initiatives. We've been invited out there on several occasions to explore the opportunity, which we are now actioning, of building our vertical farm in the Middle East um, with our local commercial partners. And the key for us there is really about, um, it's about building that food supply chain um, closer to the consumer, utilizing our technology. Since our engagement with certain government officials within the Middle East, it's driving more sort of uh, enterprises and local partnerships to explore further opportunities out there. So um, we see a lot, a lot of growth coming out of the Middle East for our technology. IOG recently went live on the JP Jenkins trading website, which is a liquidity provider for, for private companies. Um, what drove that decision and, and how, how is that going? Um, I think JP Jenkins is a really interesting platform and it really allows new and existing shareholders to effectively trade shares. And we do have a lot of interest from uh, new shareholders given some of our journey and our expansion plan in the Middle East. So I think JP Jenkins is a great facilitator for the two. And for new investors, now that you, you have a trading uh, platform uh, available for them, um, you know, how would you just summarize the IAG opportunity for them? So it's a really exciting time to be part of the IAG journey. And it really comes down to some of the Middle Eastern progress that we've made, the expansion program that the business is undertaking at the moment. And actually, some of our research and development team and our collaborative partners to explore beyond food and pharmaceutical research, which we're uh, really uh, getting involved into. And that, that's really exciting for us. And uh, we'll have to share some more details about some of those journeys for anyone that's interested. Jazz, thank you for spending time with us today to discuss IAG. Uh, if investors have any other questions, uh, I direct you first uh, to the Edison website. Thank you.